Well, it is 10 o'clock, folks. Um, and I want to give everyone who's joining us this morning on our uh, final official stop uh, on our Tech Ambassador bus a, a welcome. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, I am really quickly going to just um, run through a brief tutorial on Zoom webinars. If you are not familiar with those, um, you do have control of some settings that you don't uh, or, or that you uh, have in regular Zoom meetings, um, but they're very limited. Here are the ones you do still have um, access to. First is your audio settings, so you can change your speakers or your volume. Second is closed captioning settings, as we always do. We have that turned on. If that's unnecessary for you, you can hide those subtitles. Um, you can move them around just by dragging them on your screen or make them larger if they are helpful for you. We we'll only have one way for folks to ask questions today. Um, we will not have any live Q&A. So if you would like to ask a question, please use the Q&A feature. Just click that button at the bottom and type your question in the box. And we might answer that live if we have time. We have a really full schedule today. Um, or you might get a typed answer. And then last, we are going to be doing several polls today. So when those happen, you should see those pop up on your screen if you're using a computer. If you're using a phone or a tablet, you may just get a notification that the poll is available. And you may have to tap that on your screen in order to participate. But as always, we really, really value your feedback and hope you'll participate in those. All right, we're just gonna get started here with today's agenda. Very, very short intro. We have a little video that we've compiled. It's a little bit long, it's a little over seven minutes, but um, especially for those of you who may not have joined us on um, many of the uh, events that we've held, this will give you a, a, a taste of where we've been. It's been a really, really whirlwind ride on this Tech Ambassador bus. Uh, we do want to deliver some poll results. We've taken polls um, throughout uh, most of our events, and I think the answers that we got back are pretty interesting, so I want to make sure that I share those with everyone. Whoops. We're going to um, hear from two members of our core team, Courtney Davis and Jeremy Joyce, and then we're actually going to solicit a little bit more of your um, feedback in a couple of live polls. Then we are gonna hear from our tech ambassadors. They are gonna take a, just a few minutes and share their reflections on this uh, experience. And then hopefully if we have a little time left at the end, we'll see how this all goes. Uh, we will take just a few minutes and just have a brief discussion with all of us about what could be next for our tech ambassadors. I do just wanna mention, um, you know, here's our website in case you wanna look back at at um, any of the information that we have there. Um, the links to the poll, if, if you know other people that might wanna take them, but they're not attending the uh, event today, um, they can actually take the poll at our website. Those links are available right at the top of the page. And we're gonna remain on Facebook and Instagram. And um, our YouTube channel is gonna remain there. In fact, we'll add the video from this experience, uh, this, this event here today and many, many shorter videos. If you've been to our events, you know that we featured short videos um, of our tech ambassadors doing demonstrations. And um, we're gonna add just those. So those might be more like a minute to two or three minutes and some are a little longer. So for some people, those might be a little easier to digest. All right, so here's a little video that we put together. Uh, I called it the road we traveled. And like I said, this this will give you a little flavor of uh, where we've been kind of from the start to the end. We, we want to offer you one of those tech ambassador positions if you're willing. I am willing to. And we would very much like to offer you one of these positions if you Oh, yeah, I'd willing. love to accept. I would, I would love it. It's an opportunity of a lifetime in my opinion. Yes. Heck yeah. I would just start out by borrowing a little uh, phrase from the Grateful Dead and tell you uh, what a long and strange trip it has already been. And we are nowhere near the end of this journey well, yet. All I have to do is just push the green button and it popped out. So when I pop that out, it automatically sends a signal to the support team 
And also to my SSA and said, hey, Chris took his medicine today. Yay. Hey, Portal, call remote support. Ariel Hall. Hey, Ariel, how are you doing? You almost here? I'm good. Yep, I'm on my way. All right, bye. And now, we have a special treat coming your way. We have the tech ambassadors. And they are so cool, I can't even introduce them. So I'm going to pass it off to the great manager, Mr. George Meyer. Good, take it away. Thank you very much, Sherry. And then uh, can go around like pretty much anything that you have around your house. But it also has a feature that's cool, like I told you before. That until you get to the, like, until you get to the pot that's hot, you can touch anywhere around it, and it will be cool to the touch. Hey Google, show me my shopping list. And as you can see, strawberries, blueberries, I love berries, <laughs> Kleenex. Yeah, so it brought up most of the shopping list, and I have a button here to see more. Open the transit app. Every minute that goes by, it will let me know how many minutes I got left. Okay. The bus arrives at the bus. Oh, we're going to cross? Go on this way. Ah, okay. That's the 43. Gotcha. I'm going to show you. The utensil cleaner I use, they recommend putting soap on the on the top and on the inside. All you do is swipe whatever you're using through the fingers here or like up here to get them clean. Okay, so the reason why I got this thermostat is because it's hard for me to see little numbers. And when I moved in, it was an old, old thermostat. And my staff had to control it for me. So my remote support provider and my service coordinator with my waiver dollars, we got the Nest for me, which has big numbers, easy to see. Alexa, schedule a meeting for... April 30th and what day and time? April 30th and 3 o'clock. Is that 3 o'clock in the morning or in the afternoon? In the afternoon, please. And what's the name of the event? Doctor's appointment. That's doctor's appointment on Friday, April 30th at 3 p.m., right? Yes. Okay, I've added that. I'm going to do the standing first. It's predominantly designed for pressure relief, but yeah. it has so many other benefits for me. Everything from breathing to digestion to cardiac function to leg strengthening, which is part of the one that people think of that first and I can actually drive myself whilst it I'll definitely be able to help you. Pepsi $190. Two, two. So $1.90. <laughs> because it don't have a dot. So it told, me, it told me that that's a Pepsi. Yeah. So if I didn't really believe what she told me, then I could use the Seeing IA app and it'll just tell me. Pepsi. 
Hi, I'm William. I'm 21 years old and attend North High School in Akron, Ohio. I live at home with my mom, dad, sister, and co-star of this video, Anchor. I have a question for your, um, I live in an apartment and, um, pretty much everything here is set in stone of, you know, how everything's set up, but is there any installation or installed thing for the, um, thermometer? Uh, for the thermostat? Thermostat, yes. Well, this is what it was with me. My remote support staff installed it for me. Yeah. So, so, if, you, so if you get remote support, your remote support staff can install it in for you with your with your technology staff. Yeah. I just wanted to say I am so glad to be here today because I learned a lot of new features um, just from being here um, about uh, different ways how to use my legs. So like Robert, I do have Alexa in two rooms in my home, and I use her for a lot of things like answering emails, um, are reminding me how to do things, how to, are reminding me how to take my medication is a big one because I forget to take the medication a lot. So I've set a daily reminder every morning, which is very beneficial to me. So, you know, Alexa's come in handy. And this, and I heard earlier that somebody had said, um, about one of the questions that was sent earlier, um, that, and you're right, George, though, that it makes me, um, Alexa has made it more, um, has made it more independent for me to have less staff in a home instead of more staff. So I just wanted to say, it's not really a question but to say that this is fantastic. I learned a lot about using my Alexa and, and thank you for you know providing the information to us. All right. Um, next is some poll results. Before I actually start talking about those numbers, I did want to stop for just a brief second and say just a couple of things in terms of my own kind of personal reflections on this whole experience. One is I have never seen a tighter group of people who have never met together in person in my whole life. And that is, I probably should have warned you guys, by the way, uh, in terms of a content advisory uh, that I might spring a leak from my eyeballs at some point today. <laughs> Uh, and that might be just about to happen right now. Um, the other thing is, I really just want to say thank you to everybody on this team, to Courtney, to Jeremy, to Heidi, um, who isn't uh, on the panel with us today, for all the work you guys did, uh, most of it behind the scenes. I get to be up here with, with our tech ambassadors, um, which is super fun for me, and to the tech ambassadors themselves. Um, just a great big thank you for opening up your lives for us uh, and giving us a peek inside. Uh, it's, it's so much of it's positive, but not all of it. Um, and I, I really appreciate that you guys have been real people um, and great, great examples. So this will be something I remember and, and it's, uh, you know, I really feel like a uh, great opportunity for me to have made uh, some wonderful friends here, as well as, as uh, share some technology with people. Okay, on to some poll results. <laughs> so we asked two questions in the vast majority of our events. And these were on barriers to technology, okay? So the first one was, what is the biggest barrier to individuals with developmental disabilities attending events, virtual events, like the ones that we have been having. So if you see here, um, you know, the, the, by far the majority, um, or I shouldn't say the majority, but the, the largest percentage there, a little over 43% um, of people felt like that the biggest barrier was a lack of access to equipment uh, to connect from, okay? And I actually, at this poll, that made me really curious. Um, you know, there are some other things here, fear of technology, lack of interest was very, very low, and, and that's a great thing. Lack of internet service was a significant one. Um, and we did have a significant number of people that said other, which made me think that maybe I had left um, something that would have been a good answer off. But I do wanna take a brief poll here. Um, and it's just got one question. 
So this is on smartphone use, okay? So the question here is out of all of the individuals with developmental disabilities that I know personally, so if you are one of those people, you answer for yourself. If you're not, you answer for the people that you know. I would estimate this percentage of them use a smartphone, okay? So we'll just give you guys a few minutes to um, give us some feedback on that. I, I think uh, that that might be an interesting footnote to this poll here. Um, and what I'm wondering is, is it really that folks don't have the right equipment to connect to a virtual meeting? Or is there some element of education about how you use those devices to connect to a virtual meeting that might also be happening? All right. Uh, and I'm going to move on to the other question that we asked everyone. I'll leave that poll up for just another minute there if you're still answering that question. This one was on barriers to technology. So the question we asked here is, what is the biggest barrier to individuals with developmental disabilities using technology in their everyday lives? Okay. And this one was even more extreme. You can see some of the answers here, fear of technology, lack of encouragement from others, lack of funding. But over half of the people felt that the biggest reason that people may not use technology in their lives is a lack of understanding. And my really, really big takeaway from that is that uh, our work is not done. There's still a lot to do. Um, and a lot of folks that need the information that uh, the type of information we've been presenting. All right. So that is the official end of my slideshow. That's going <clears> to <throat> stop sharing our screen. And at this point, what I want to do is give a couple of members of our core team a couple of minutes to share their reflections. Uh, Jeremy, would you like to go first? Uh, sure. Um, I would just like to start off by saying it's been an awesome experience to be part of this team. Uh, the tech ambassadors, um, you guys did an amazing job. Um, I was just blown away by how um, invested you were in uh, the program, getting the word out, um, just spreading the your guys' knowledge about technology and just how much you wanted to help other people learn more about it, um, get involved. Uh, so it's just been awesome. Um, Hopefully one day soon we can actually meet in person. Uh, but I just want to say you guys did an awesome job and I can't wait to see where it goes from here. Thank you, Jeremy. Courtney, what would you like to share with everyone? Unmute there. there you Hi guys. Uh, yeah, you know, a, a lot of the same things that, that George and Jeremy has said, you know, I, I am just so fortunate that um, SOCOG allowed me to be part of this grant project and, and that George was welcoming to all of us at SOCOG to be a part of the team. Um, you know, I think that through this program, I learned a lot from you, from each of you about um, technology and about other things in your lives and how services are provided to you. So I, I'm absolutely 100% positive that um, you were able to, you know, empower and encourage individuals around Ohio with disabilities to, you know, at least try to learn more about technology and, and how it can help them, you know, become more independent because you guys were great uh, leaders. Um, you know, you led by example on, in every one of your, um, your events, and I know that you motivated other individuals, and that was very, very exciting and, and fun to watch. Um, I, I want to thank you guys for just being so passionate about technology and about uh, your independence because it really, I think, uh, transferred to, uh, had to transfer the attendees at your events. Um, your excellent advocates, you know, for yourself and for others. Um, and I'm, I'm just really proud to be, to say that I can be, that to say I was a part of this grant project. Um, I was really impressed with how throughout this whole project, you guys were just willing to just go on the fly with speaking engagements. And I don't think any of you ever said no, which was awesome and uh, very, very appreciative of that. Um, you were always positive and um, it made my experience working with the team 
uh, much, much more enjoyable with, with the positive atmosphere. So you guys are awesome. I also want to give a big shout out to George. Um, you know, all the, the hard work and time that you put into this grant uh, did not go unnoticed. Um, you, you went over and beyond. Uh, so on the behalf of SOCOG, and I know Heidi's out there listening, um, you know, we want to say thank you to each of you for just representing SOCOG with such determination and, and professionalism. And um, we hope that, that this program can go on in the future. And yes, I can't wait to meet all of you in person one day. <laughs> oh, thank you. Well, I mean, I'll echo that. I haven't said that myself yet, but uh, that we're going to make that happen. Not sure exactly how or when yet, but uh, we're going to make that happen for sure. Okay, I have uh, a couple of uh, feedback questions that I want to ask everyone. And the first one is just general feedback from anyone who's in attendance here. As I mentioned, and I'm going to launch this poll here. These are your impressions and thoughts, um, uh, you know, about four questions um, that will, you know, let us know how we did basically um, and what your opinions are on the types of information we're trying to get out, how we're trying to disseminate that. Um, these questions, as I said, um, can be answered by folks who are, are not attending the events uh, themselves today. If you go to the front page of our website, you'll see two links for this poll and another one that we'll do in just a minute. Um, but let me just, okay. I guess I'm going to leave this one up for a minute. We're getting some answers. Uh, and the second one, I tell you, without actually, um, kind of stopping the progress of our event today. The second one is for SSAs only. So I may actually wait for a little bit um, and launch that one a little later. Okay, good. We're starting to get some better uh, feedback to those questions now. Good. I'm going to leave that up. And the next thing we want to do is to hear from our tech ambassadors. You guys have probably been waiting for that the whole time, right? So I'm going to introduce them and uh, kind of include a little silly uh, award that they didn't know I was gonna give them <laughs> as I introduce each person. And we're gonna go in the same order we went in our uh, kickoff event. So I'm gonna start out by introducing uh, the tech ambassador for Southeast Ohio. And uh, I gave him the award for best beard. And uh, <laughs> He is from Ironton, Ohio, Tanner Huff. Tanner, take it away. Tell us what you think about this program. Thank you, George. I really have been enthusiastic about being a tech ambassador because I just love like looking at and figuring out new and in my case for the like the utensil cleaner that was in the video unique ways on getting uh stuff done and i had shown some other products that i'm in the process of getting in my second regional event that I am so excited to get that I had to just like mention that to the group several times because it will change my life and just knowing all the uh, other tech ambassadors has just like been a blessing and a just like I'm speechless as you can tell about how this opportunity is like 
came up and just changed my life for the better because a few things that they have shown in their presentations, I'm actually trying to either get for myself or look into getting in the future to help my life out. And it just, it, <clears throat> it just has been a, look, a great opportunity. And I hope that we can continue the program in the future and like we can all get together because I've wanted to meet all the other tech ambassadors for months now. All right. Thank you so much, Tanner. You're uh, welcome. We've really enjoyed you. Hey, what is, what is the progress on the ACE site? Is that it's, coming? Yeah, they approved OOD approved it, and I'm actually working with the, I'm working with someone that I worked with 10 years ago, or now 11, on living skills training. She's actually going to be delivering it. Okay. Then they ship it to her. So I'll get to communicate with her and probably like show her some things about it. I if love she it. Never saw it because That's great. she she's training me, but I might have I might need to train her. There you go. Full information flowing in both directions. Yeah. By the way, if you're curious um, and you did not see Tanner's second round event, you should visit our, visit our YouTube page uh, and, and find that event uh, and watch the part of it, at least on ACE site. It is a super high tech, super exciting thing that's going to probably offer Tanner uh, a great deal uh, more freedom. All right. Thanks again, Tanner. You're Next welcome. up from Central Ohio. Voted most likely to know someone in any room she walks into. <laughs> Lives in Columbus, Ohio. It is Marcy Strauder. Take it away, Marcy. Thank you, George. Hi, my name is Marcy Strauder. I want to start by saying that this program has helped me so much. I know about technology before, but I have learned so much more in working with Tech Ambassador. I've enjoyed giving my Tech Ambassador presentations and I've shown y'all some of my secret technology flavors and hopefully you can learn from these recipes that are in my Marcy's Technology Cookbook. It's been a new chapter for me and I hope this technology chapter will be good for you and the individuals you work with every day. If you're, or if you're a service coordinator or a SSA, I hope you've learned a lot about these technologies because it's really important and they're important for individuals to have in their homes so they don't have to depend on staff if they don't need to. They can have a sense of independence in their own homes without staff. Also, if someone has full-time staff, they can still have some independent using communication devices that talk. And they can use these to talk to their providers, 
and other people and tell them what they want and need. I had so much fun riding on this Tech Ambassador bus. I didn't have to pack or buy a ticket or go to a bus stop. I feel like I really got to ride first class and I hope this <laughs> bus will keep on rolling and that we can have more adventures with this program together. I've had so much fun with Tanner, Chris. I knew the other tech ambassador friend, my tech ambassador friends, Nathan and Robert before the program started, but these two were new people I met and we became really good friends. We follow each other on social media and got to work together on these good things called Tech Ambassadors. We all gave some extra flavor to and some spice in the sauce. I had a lot of fun getting to know Tanner, especially because I finally found somebody that has the same disability as me. So talking with Tanner is like talking with someone who knows what it is. Thanks to all my friends and families and my providers at Ohio at Home and my remote support company that I use, Med for All, as the, the advocates I've worked with across the state of Ohio, to all of you, I hope you stir it up and keep it cooking. All right. Awesome. Thank you, Marcy. Um, next up, representing Northeast Ohio, the tech ambassador vo voted most likely to crack an irreverent joke from Portsmouth. It is Chris Cooley. Go, Chris. Hi, my name is Chris Cooley. I am from Tyrone County, Ohio. Um, <laughs> yes, I love to joke. I love to laugh. Um, it's important to laugh um, and have a little bit of humor. But um, when my SSA contacted me, um, asking me if I want to be part of the um, Ohio Tech Ambassador Program. I had no clue what it was about. I really didn't. But talking in front of people, um, educating people about uh, people with disabilities, the rights and the laws, ADA, opening doors for people with disabilities. I love doing that, but I was like, I don't know um, what this program is about. So, you know, because I like to, um, you know, um, be an advocate for people with disabilities and open up doors, I said, yeah, I would love to apply for this program and be part of the team. And so I did. Uh, waited for a while, didn't hear anything, and I'm like, mm hmm. You know, maybe I'm not, maybe I'm not the right person for that. But then I got a phone call from George Meyer and asking me if um, I could do a meeting. Um, so we did a meeting, did the interview, um, and then I became a tech ambassador. And I've not known any of the um, tech ambassador um, folks um, up until now. Um, I got to work with them, learn things from them. Um, I bought things because it was their fault that I bought things because they got to talking about it. It was exciting and it was something that I wanted to try. So I went out and bought it. Um, so yeah, it's been wonderful working with everyone on this team. 
I do believe that we're going to get to move forward, and I can't wait to do that again um, with our program. And um, I, I had a great opportunity of talking to many SSA service coordinators, um, individuals. I got to talk to a young man named William um, in Northeast Ohio and being a superhero um, and being able um, to meet those people really opened doors and really opened doors for me because of the questions that they had. Um, it was, I had to think about them. I had to put myself in that situation. Uh, what would I do? How, you know, what would I do um, with that comment? You know, like say, um, how do you use um, Siri on my iPhone? If I didn't know about that, I had to come up with, um, search it out and figure out how would I use it if I needed it. And so I can answer that comment. It's been amazing. And, and I love riding on this bus. Uh -huh. It cracks me up that this little yellow bus, um, a lot of people um, joke about it. Um, you know, back in, the, back in the day, you know, it's just a little joke. You know, the little bus is coming. Um, you know, you got all your friends and people with this, all different kinds of disability riding on this bus. And you never know what you're going to hear, never know what you're going to see. It's all, <laughs> it's all um, a surprise. But anyway, um, like George was talking about our YouTube channel, please go and check out the videos um, and, and reach out to us. You know, even though we may not be doing this at the, you know, in the next couple of weeks, um, but we're going to you know, continue working on getting it started again. Um, just go to our YouTube page and um, look at the videos and reach out to us with any comments. And also, um, I, I had a great opportunity meeting um, a filmmaker company in Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, because of the Tech Ambassador Program, I got to meet those cool people and and have the opportunity in the future to do videos um and also um if you want to see my story independent story um you could go on facebook or youtube and um or the website it's called safe in home safe in home um support um so they have a video there that shows um, my independence and how I want to see everyone else to be able to be independent. It's our right to be independent. It's our right to have technology first. Thank you, George. Thank you everyone for allowing me to be part of you, um, your life um, and learning a lot of things. Awesome. Thanks so much, Chris. Um, all right, next up, representing Northwest Ohio, voted most likely to suggest matching tattoos from Holland, Ohio. It is Nathan Turner. Take it away, Nathan. Oh, unmute there, buddy. He's getting a tattoo. Sorry about that. <laughs> Sorry about that. Good morning, everyone. And thank you so much, George. It's just been my absolute pleasure to be the tech ambassador for Northwestern Ohio. I have learned so much from each of you. And, I, you know, I, I came into this because my day job, I, I work in artificial intelligence and I refine search engine algorithms and do a lot of work on digital assistants. And I recognized how helpful they could be to facilitate independence for people with disabilities. But I still found myself learning so much from each of my 
fellow tech ambassadors and the community of other people with disabilities and just learning from their creativity and their resilience and their strength and how they use technology to be more independent. One example that uh, specifically comes to mind is Renee Wood and how she just tinkering with her joystick was able to learn how to use her computer and her joystick functioned as a mouse for her non-dominant hand. And that type of creativity is, I, I think, something that is really valuable for an initiative like ours because having someone with lived experience educate other people is imperative and I think a roadmap for us on the way forward. Um, also, I just think about how much of what we do is maybe 50% about the technology, but it's also the other 50% is navigating the system and empowering individuals with disabilities to speak up to their SSAs and letting them know what resources are available for them through remote supports and assistive technology to facilitate their independence. And I think that digital assistants are going to be a big part of facilitating long-term independence in the system as we figure out creative ways to address shortages and direct support staff. And I really hope that we're able to continue with funding and maybe partner with these big companies that work on digital assistance to make their materials more accessible to people that process information a little bit differently. Um, and then also, I want to give a special piece of gratitude to the folks in uh, the Lucas County People First organization for allowing me to come and share my experiences with them and sharing their experiences with me. Uh, ha having that experience um, and just listening to their stories really sort of solidified to me the impact of what we do and the fact that there is, you know, es essentially two different worlds in Ohio where, you know, some of us have fully integrated technology in our lives and yet to others, it's almost a completely foreign concept. So that's what motivates our work. I really hope we can continue. And in closing, I, I just want to express my gratitude to the members of our core team and my fellow tech ambassadors. I'm so grateful to each of you I, it's so difficult in this moment to express how much each of you mean to me. And I do hope we can get together soon. I know uh, George is overdue for a champagne shower. Uh, I'm so grateful to you and all of your dedication and sacrifice and your willingness to continue the grant and, and to just be adaptable and allow us to do this virtually because I, I don't know what the secret sauce is, but somehow we all came together and just made a delicious meal to quote Marcy's cooking metaphor. <laughs> oh, Thank you so much, everybody. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Nathan. Uh, last, but definitely, definitely not least, representing Southwest Ohio, voted most likely to tell you to get off his lawn from Cincinnati, it is Robert Shoemake. Take it away, Robert. Thank you, George. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. <clears throat> um, the Tech Ambassador Program um, is an awesome program. I think it's exactly what, what people with disabilities in Ohio need. Um, the concept of uh, learning and understanding technology and getting it out to people to help them uh, 
enjoy their lives even more than they have before. Um, the technology that's available today is changing by the minute now. I mean, every five minutes, there's a new app coming out. You know, Microsoft and Apple and all these big companies are forever coming out with new softwares new updates, new apps. Um, and the interesting thing is, and I think one of the important thing is, that they hire people with disabilities to get their feedback on how to improve the technology. The Take a Medicine program has allowed me to reach more people with disabilities and share my experiences with the technology and to show people how technology can enhance your life. I've been using technology for, wow, probably 30 years at least. Um, and I was able to go through college using technology. And I think one of the reasons that we all get along so well is because we all have the same goals and dreams and expectations about the program. Uh, we all want to help other people with disabilities use and understand and learn technology. We all want to help people find resources in their communities to help pay for and support training with these technologies. Um, we all want to you know, be a, a big part of the tech, assistive technology movement. You know, I'm, I have a social work degree, so I am a person who loves to generally help people find things that they can use and need. So this program was perfect for me. And, you know, I see it evolving, getting stronger and better. And I think it should um, stick around. And I think a lot of the counties, all 88 counties in Ohio, think this is a good idea, a good program. I see it evolving to the point where there will be more than just five tech ambassadors. Hopefully there'll be one in each county where the tech ambassador can focus on that county and building that county, making that county more technology savvy in this day and age. So I would just like to thank the core team, George Myers, who we had a lot of fun when he was here. Um, a lot of uh, um, experiences that he hadn't dealt with before and it was interesting to him. He's a, he's a great guy. He's uh, the perfect one for this uh, a grant because he's always so helpful. And I'd like to thank DODD who created and helped support this grant and everybody who, who helped all of us, you know, do what we do. 
Thanks. Have a blessed day. All right, wonderful. Thank you, Robert. We appreciate that. Um, all right, I think we have one poll question that we uh, have not asked yet. And I wanna make sure that we do this. This is for SSAs only, all right? So um, where the other feedback was anonymous, this one is not. So I'm gonna launch this. And this is really specific targeted questions toward SSAs uh, that have to do with your, your feelings and thoughts about technology and serving people on your caseload. So I'm gonna let that go. And uh, while that is going, I think it may have taken a little bit uh, on the last poll before you guys could actually answer. So I'm gonna leave this up for a little bit. What I wanna do with this last few minutes, and boy, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just say, this is, this is by far <laughs> the best that we as a group have ever stuck to a schedule <laughs> in any of these events. Uh, we are like right on target here. So in the remaining minutes, um, what we wanna do is just kind of pose the question and everybody can chime in on this. Some of you kind of already have. Um, so uh, the, the question is what's next, right? Um, officially this grant ends on June 30th. As far as we know, um, you know, there's nothing official that says that we will be able to continue. I think uh, you've already heard and I'll just add my two cents to that. I definitely think the program uh, should continue in some form or fashion. Um, you know, you were asked, actually asked a poll question in one of the polls about whether you think in-person events um, would be helpful. Actually, as, as we let folks uh, chime in here, um, I may actually see, see if we can pull those poll results up and share those with you so you'll get to see the answer to that. But um, what's next for us could take a lot of forms. So let me just kind of open that question up. Who wants to chime in and, and maybe say what you think about how this program could look if it uh, can go um, forward? I will start. Um, I, I, I think that it will be awesome to be able um, for the program to you know, keep going. Um, I think that it's gonna open more doors um, and opportunity um and in my opinion um you know as the SSAs and the service coordinators um have been you know listening to our stories and listening to us talk about how um independent that technology can help us um my my hope and my dream um is that each one of us in each county uh, or part of Ohio um, that SSA service coordinators would want since Ohio opening back up again um, a little bit. Um, now, I'm hoping that service coordinators, the county boards will reach out to each tech ambassador and be like, hey, would you be willing if we could get you here to come to, to our um, event and talk about your story and talk about technology. Um, so that's my hope for that. And, um, and I want to say thank you to the interpreters um, uh, because that's opened up a lot of doors and showed a lot of people that the deaf community um, should be involved also with the technology and stuff. Great. Who else has some insights they want to share on that question? Everyone. I think that we should keep this going because there's a lot of more stuff that we have to share with y'all about technology. And I think that with the tech ambassadors, I think we can take it even higher. Maybe we can go to transitions, classes, schools, colleges that have classes for people with disabilities, if they have an online class, maybe we can teach them about technology since things are also going still online and teaching them that. 
and just going to self-advocacy groups and speaking there. And if we can't go there, Zoom there. We don't, like I said, don't even need a plane ticket. And I just think that having this program is so important because there's so many people that don't know, that are scared and don't know about the technologies that we need. And I think us as tech ambassadors, we can still show them because we have a lot of more work to do. And I think this would be great if we can still keep this train rolling. All right. Who else? I think this um, program will evolve. I can see it um, moving to more of a um, hybrid or fast moving program to keep up with all the technology. Um, I think we're going to be able to get back together soon and you know I can see all of us traveling within our regions meaning you know in Columbus and actually you know, one of my hopes and dreams for this program is that each one of us get the opportunity to work with Microsoft and work with Google and Apple as consultants to what people with disabilities need. By us being a technology first state, um, DODD has invested time and money to making sure that Ohioans have opportunities to use technology to better their lives. So I see the program continuing. It's all about who wants to help participate in keeping the program going. All right, Nathan, did you have uh, something you wanted to share? Yeah, I, I can share quickly. I think that we definitely should move forward. I, I think attitudes are changing with respect to people with developmental disabilities doing more and more in society and having these types of programs where people with developmental disabilities serve as kind of a nexus between the public and the system it is a really powerful thing when, as I said, when someone with lived experience can, can educate and train other people, you know, and I also agree with all of the others in terms of the ability to want to collaborate with larger tech companies and, re and provide advice on, on accessibility and how programs should work. Um, and just when, when we get, when we get back to our barriers, just thinking about what lack, lack of access means and what technology can really do to make the you know, to, to make things more accessible. Um, I, I just think that we have to continue our work. I would love for us to get bigger as an organization and incorporate more stories, um, do more with our social media, but uh, we, we need funding to do that. But regardless of what happens, we're still going to be a resource for the community and we're still going to, just in our individual lives, support people with disabilities and connecting to technology. Very well said, Nate. Excellent, thank you. Tanner, you got something you wanna share? Yeah, uh, I just want to say just everything that all the other tech ambassadors have said, but I want to include doing this has opened a lot of doors for myself personally that I had never thought of getting the opportunity to do. It's 11 o'clock. And it just has been just a great opportunity to meet, like I said earlier, other people that I see as 
lifelong friends and in my case family and just like it just has been a like a blessing to do all this and I hope to like Nathan was saying to work with bigger companies like Apple, Google, Amazon with Alexa and just build the accessibility community and the accessibility knowledge on those like companies forefronts and I know there's been like new advancements in technology for Apple that I heard about just recently. They are implementing new ways of using products like the Apple Watch that like no one had ever maybe thought about like 10 years ago before they implemented the Apple Watch into their ecosystem. But now it's coming to a forefront where you with limited mobility can use it with gestures that like I myself had never like thought about with using like the like gesture based system to create new ways of using it but it would be a like a great opportunity to work with all of you all again and the state to show other states like how technology can be used to increase independence for the nation as a whole and possibly take it to like other countries even that yeah. have disability like disabled people and need that knowledge to like have it like a worldwide advocacy like adventure that Love would it. be just our like that would just be my like dream of just taking it further and that's, that's a great dream all right so uh i want to do a couple things officially here it is it's 1103 so just uh for anyone who did have something else to do i'm going to do a little something officially here and then we're going to share some poll results with anyone who could stay so here's what i'm going to do officially this is our little tech ambassador bus <laughs> so that's our that's our official goodbye uh, if anyone would like to stay around for a minute i am going to share some poll results from the polls that we took today just because i think that might be interesting um all right so here we go um which is the best way of getting individuals and families to attend virtual tech ambassador events social media posts or a strong uh, answer there. Here's a really interesting one. I feel that tech ambassador events would be more helpful um, in person than virtually. We actually had more people answer false to that. Pretty interesting. For virtual events, I would prefer the following split between presentation and discussion. Most people said they would prefer equal parts presentation and discussion. And then last, 
uh, the vast majority of folks who answered that poll, poll question said that they would like to see uh, our program continue. All right. I'm gonna issue a couple thanks here. Um, we've, we've all said thank you to each other uh, and that's super appropriate. I'll, I'll give an official uh, thank you to our ASL interpreters who've always done such a great job for us. Uh, thank you to everyone who's attended. Um, a big thank you to Kyle Corbin from DODD uh, and Stacy who've been there. Uh, you know, this was their idea. So we hope we've uh, done right by this idea. Um, and uh, who knows, who knows what kind of journey we could be on in the future. Alrighty, just on behalf of everybody, have a great, great Tuesday. We'll see ya. Bye.